Second test between Australia and Wales, done and dusted. And whilst it's a series, actually, that might lack the quality of, say, the All Blacks against England or South Africa's matchup against Ireland, it's been interesting in its own right. These are two teams that are building. They have a lot of areas in their game that need to improve, but it means they've been relatively evenly matched. Welcome back to the channel. Click off the video now if you're looking to avoid the result because three, two, one, two nil series win for the Wallabies. 36-28 it finished in Melbourne, but a game that kind of went back and forth. You thought at one point Wales might drag themselves back into it. You thought at another point the Wallabies were easily out in front and Wales came back into it as well. So the comment section is where you can let me know what you make of these two teams and this series. But I thought ultimately this game and actually this series really kind of epitomises these two sides in that they both had some good moments and some nice stuff. But there was a lot of poor stuff. There was some ill discipline. There were handling errors. There was just sloppy parts of both of these sides games, which is a reflection of where they both are. They are trying to build. They have been down in the doldrums. They are looking to build themselves back up into the forces that they once were. And actually, it was quite funny, I thought, towards the end of that game, it was two sides that were... It felt like they were trying to lose it and that you had Liam Williams batting it back in field for Dalgunu to score that try. I then thought the game was done and dusted. And shortly after that, Nick White gets kind of charged down. Australia were slow to react and Rio Dyer, with fair play to him, a really strong finish in the corner to get Wales back into it. And I think it's always a sign of two sides that aren't that great when it feels like they're, they're doing things to try and lose the game almost. So yeah, I thought it epitomised where they both are at this moment in time. There is a noticeable drop off, isn't there? If you've done what I've done and you've got up this morning in the UK and you've watched the England game first and then that game, they are two different levels of kind of skill execution and intensity. And I'm not throwing any shade there because as an England fan, for years, England were that team that you would watch their game and it would be a much lower standard to many of the other top sides in the world. But I thought it was quite a big contrast in terms of this morning between those two games. I'll get back onto Wales in just a second. The end of their season, if you like. Plenty of things for them to kind of build towards. In terms of Australia, for years I've looked at the Wallabies and even though they haven't been great, they haven't won too many games, I've always felt they've had the skeleton of a good team. Am I wrong here? I was messaging a friend during the game and I was saying, I quite like a lot of these Wallaby players. And he was saying, I don't think any of them really, or certainly not enough of them, will ever be top quality internationals. So where do you kind of fall in this argument? I just kind of look at it and, you know, Paisami, Ikatao, if he was playing, Kellaway is obviously a good player, Tom Wright, I quite liked. I like the look of Kale at number eight today. I've always liked Valentini. There's always been players in that Australia team that I like. I just have never really seen them kick on. And I still feel in this series, there's been some really good stuff from them. And then they don't really at the moment have the consistency, maybe have the depth as well in their team to, to be what I feel they, they maybe could be. But I suppose from their point of view, it's two wins from two. The Joe Schmidt era is up and running. I still back Joe Schmidt as a coach to get the absolute best out of that team. I think he will get them well organised and I think he will make them a tougher, tougher side to come up against, whereas they've maybe been quite easy over the last few years. Not a team that many other sides would particularly fear, I suppose, is a good way of looking at the Wallabies. They do need to improve their mall defence though, <laughs> which brings me back on to Wales because there are some positives from this tour. Look, the headlines from it, if people break down the numbers, is nine defeats in a row now for Wales. A lot of areas of their game that aren't clicking, a lot of question marks over certain positions and whether the players coming through are good enough. Those are all valid concerns. But if we look at the positives, the driving wall has to be one. That looked like a weapon. And it looked like a weapon that certainly had dragged Wales back in, oh, into the game. I wondered at one point whether it was going to be the weapon which won them the game. Because after that dire try I mentioned, five-point game, they did have a line-out down in the Aussie 22. They weren't able to capitalise. But for a moment, I thought, push over try, Dowie Lake possibly getting himself a hat-trick here. That is a weapon for Wales. That is a positive. Another positive is actually the improvement as well in the scrum from one week to the other. I know... They still conceded some penalties today. It wasn't perfect, but I think that was an area where they had so they did show signs of improvement. Archie Griffin, I thought, looked good as well. But one of the big, big positives is Dowie Lake. It is unquestionable, I think, for me, that Gatland moving forward 
he needs Jack Morgan back, number one, and he'll have Dowie Lake. And I think those two guys are who he is going to build this team around and build this forward pack around. And then you start looking at players like Chris Chunza, Daffid Jenkins. What's the potential in them? Two big boys, two young players, two guys who have already got a decent amount of experience for their age at domestic level in the Premiership in England. How much potential do they have in them to improve? I think the bigger questions around this Wales team, certainly for me anyway at the moment, is the back line. I feel like Ellis Bevan has done pretty well coming in at nine. Hopefully he gets some more opportunities. But what's going to happen at 10? Is it Ben Thomas, in which case a Cardiff actually going to play him at fly half because they haven't tended to? Tension between the union and the clubs, I think, is probably brewing. Well, there's always been tension there, but I think that is an issue on the horizon. So what happens at 10? Is Cam Winnett good enough at fullback? We've seen good stuff from him this season. Maybe he needs more time, but I think that's still up in the air. Is Mason Grady a 12? He mainly plays on the wing again for his club. I look at the back line is where I'm... I have more question marks. I think this forward pack has to get through a lot of work at the moment because I think that's where more of the strengths are for Wales. So look, I know there is loads of questions. Both of these teams aren't great at the moment. I think, you know, we, we all kind of accept that, don't, don't we? With Wales, it's... You have to be patient. Is there a point where the fan base just starts getting more and more frustrated? That's not really a question I can answer. Wales fans, let me know kind of where your mind is at the moment with this team. And Wallabies fans, how positive do you feel? Start of the Joe Schmidt era, as I say. I back him. I think he's a really good coach. They will have much tougher tests still to come, but I think at least they've got the positivity of a couple of wins on home soil to get their season up and running. It's a pretty green team. We'll see how they go. That's kind of my general thoughts on it. Don't forget, like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, would love it if you hit subscribe and drop a comment down below. I'll see you in the next one.